Hello. So the things you'll need for this is a fairly specced out PC with, with USB 3.0. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You can even use a laptop as long as it has 3.0 and it can, it's fairly, it's a fairly updated and quick laptop. You will need OBS on your computer. You will need a microphone, a capture card and console of your choice. We are focused, since this is a Splatoon channel, we are focusing on the Nintendo Switch. You don't need a webcam, but it is recommended for anybody trying to get into content creation, but we kind of have that VTuber route now. So how to plug in your capture card. I personally have an Avermedia Live Gamer Extreme 3, I believe it's called. And going from left to right, we have HDMI in. HDMI in goes to your console. That USB should only plug into your Switch, PS5, Xbox, doesn't matter what the console is that plugs into the HDMI in port. The HDMI out port, however, goes to your monitor. So you plug that in, plug it into the HDMI port of your monitor, and that will be what displays for you after it's passed through the card. Next is the USB 3 port, or it could be, it's usually a USB-C port that will go to a USB 3 that plugs into your computer, and you will most likely have an audio jack. It might be two of them where it says in and out. We're not really gonna focus on that, but if you have somebody who has a wired headset, you might, you definitely might wanna check that out, but usually you can get that audio through the computer, and I'll show you how to set that up as well. So now that we have all that plugged in, let's go ahead and go on to the software, my settings, and th some tips and recommendations I can make. So we're probably going to be focusing more on the recording side of things because that's something that I tend to do more of than streaming, but I will go ahead and go through my streaming settings with you guys. But you can see I got all this stuff. You personally do not need all this like I do. This stuff, we're only going to go through the basics of things you need to do to get it working. So as you can see right here, we're in the general. Nothing, you don't really need to change anything here. Where you need to be focused is right here on the output tab. This is where we're gonna focus first. And if you want my streaming settings, here's here's my streaming settings all for all of you. So first you're gonna wanna go ahead and put the out mo output mode to advanced. Obviously I can't change it, but you can put it to advanced and a bunch of these options will pop up. These are my settings, but obviously I can throw in some recommendations for you as well that could work better for you. These are what work for me. First thing I want to notice is your recording path. Your recording path is whatever you record, that's where it's going to save. So you're going to want to use this very wisely. You're going to want to make sure it's on a drive that you want to have it on. You got to make sure you can make a folder and dedicate it to that and put it wherever you want to put it. After you do that, we're going to go on the recording fo format. So recording format, I have it on MKV. But the other option I would recommend doing is MP4. MP4 is also a fantastic file option, gives you probably some of the highest quality in terms of video format. Audio encoder, I keep this default. I haven't really even touched it. When it comes to audio tracks, something that's pretty big, making sure whenever you're editing, editing a video, you're gonna go ahead and Having multiple audio tracks makes it e easier for you to control audio levels. Personally, I have three. So next thing here is the encoder. So this is probably the most important part of the video that you're gonna be. Currently, my settings are CBR. There's a bunch of different options here, and I, I personally prefer CBR. That stands for constant bitrate. It's gonna always be that bitrate no matter what. And I have a bitrate kind of set pretty high. My PC can handle it. This is kind of depending on how your PC hands, handles it. But I have it at 60,000 kilobits per second. That's about 60 megabits per second. It seems huge, but it's actually not that big. It will give you bigger files though. So the higher the bitrate, the bigger the file. Keyframe interval, you're gonna wanna go ahead and put this at two. Auto kind of makes it a bit more blurry at times and when it comes to your preset it's whatever your pc can handle usually but i would say to stick to this area right here p5 p6 or p7 slow slower or slowest personally i do slowest because i know my pc can handle in terms of tuning this is completely up to you i have high quality because i'm i'm huge on quality multi-pass mode i don't really haven't really touched this one i just kind of put on two passes full resolution has given me good results. Next is your profile. I personally do high, but main and baseline are fine too. Psychovisual tuning, I would absolutely recommend turning this on. It kind of helps, especially if you're trying to record Splatoon. <laughs> There's a lot of motion to this game. So being able to have something that helps with the high motion situation makes it much easier. GPU, you're gonna wanna leave this at zero. I personally leave this at zero and haven't really noticed much of a difference. Max B frames, keep this at two. This was at two by default for me. Next 
Next is the audio tab. I just keep everything at 192. We will talk about replay buffer later. There's timestamps on the video. So if you want to skip to that, I will highly recommend. This, I think, deserves its own section. Uh, next is the audio tab. So sample rate. I personally keep this at 44.1 kilohertz. I think so. The difference is, is you put it at 48 kilohertz if you're going to do 5.1 stereo surround sound or just 5.1 surround sound. Since I don't have that, I'm going to use stereo. And so it's recommended to do 44.1 kilohertz. All this audio stuff, this is pretty much based on what you have as a speaker. Whatever you're listening to your computer through is usually where you should have this. And that's where the audio is going to come out in OBS. Obviously, my, my, my auxiliary audio is your microphone i personally again hyperx quadcast everything else here unless you're recording with multiple people you should really that's when you should care about this so if you have two microphones and you guys are like sitting across the room having this set to something else or whatever that other microphone is is highly recommended as well next these things i'd never touch these you don't need to these hotkeys if you have a foot pedal i would recommend turning these on so you can push that hot so you can push that foot pedal to turn on the microphone. But that's really it about this tab. Next up is the video tab. So obviously I have my canvas at 1080p, 16 by nine, 1080p. And usually the downscale filter will have something here, but that's only if you downscale. The output scale is whatever you, if you set it below the resolution, the downscale filter is what you usually give it. Down here is where it really matters the most. And you're gonna wanna go ahead and just put your, your FPS at 60 FPS. If it can handle it, then definitely 60 FPS I would recommend. But if it can't handle 60 FPS, absolutely go 30 FPS. It's still very watchable and it's just fine. That's really it with that. So hotkeys is where you kind of set up all your stuff. I personally only have a hotkey for screenshots. I'm, I don't mind hitting the button, clicking the button to record or stop recording. And there's really not much there. This is all based on what you want. And if you have an additional device that helps you press these things easier, then highly recommend in advanced. The only thing I really touched was the process priority. I put that to high so it can prioritize this software when it's open. And that's pretty much it for the settings. Let's go ahead and talk about the replay buffer. So the replay buffer is the number one advice I could give literally anybody. The replay buffer feature is probably going to be the most useful feature out of this whole thing, especially when you're somebody who's recording. If you notice a lot of my videos, I'm able to have this live game, but you kind of see me sitting there, with my face came on in silence. That is because I'm just kind of going for replays. It's, I highly recommend doing it for anything because that's that's the one button I turn on whenever it comes to recording Salmon Run. Replay buffer pretty much is when you turn it on, it's recording, but if you turn it off, it doesn't save the recording at all. Instead, you put you press a little save button next to it. So in this setting option, you're going to want to enable it. And then a button will pop up down here, right under recording. And your maximum replay time is based on seconds. So if you want to do the math, 600 seconds is 10 minutes. 60 seconds, obviously, is one minute. And so if you do 1,200 seconds, that's 20 minutes. And obviously, that's going to give you your estimated storage usage. Mine's four gigs because of the high bit rate. Again, this is probably the most useful feature I would recommend to you because let's say you're wanting to go for videos. You're having more bad games than you are having good games. You get like this really cool high kill game and you stop recording because you're having a bad day in the game. If you have the replay feature turned on, you can hit that save button. It'll keep from the moment you started the replay to the moment you saved it with whatever happened within that 10 minutes is what's going to pop it pop up in the replay buffer. This is especially useful for anything that doesn't have theater mode, and especially in that being Salmon Run or single player. So if you get like a really cool speed run time on single player, but you weren't recording it, but you had the replay feature on, now you can save it and you're good to go. I personally have mine set to 600 seconds. This is also a very big time saver. So if you're going and recording a video and it's a bad gameplay or whatever, and you stop recording, you're gonna have to go into the file explorer, go to where that file is, and delete it on your own, go into the recycle bin, empty it out if the file is small enough. It's a whole process. The replay feature saves you from that entirely. Probably, again, the most useful feature, and it uses your recording settings. So how do I get my audio through my capture card without using the, the whole ports or whatever? Currently, I am on Windows 10. I'm not on Windows 11, but it should be about the same thing. If you right click here on the speaker next to the time down at the bottom right hand corner, Click sounds. This little, this tiny little screen will pop up for you. It'll pop up in the sounds tab. What you're gonna wanna do is go to recording tab and you'll see all these devices. My capture card is popping up right here, the Live Gamer Extreme 3. What you're gonna wanna do is if you find it, you wanna right click, 
go to properties, and then you want to go to the listen tab. And when you hit listen, there's an option here that says listen to this device. So go ahead, check that, and hit apply. And immediately, you should be able to hear your device. Open volume mixer, and you'll usually see it in your volume mixer. And you're just going to want to go ahead and turn it down or turn it up to whatever you're liking. Depending on the day, I personally put it down to about 30, 25%. So next thing we'll do is focus on our, our whole setup here. So when you're on OBS Studio, you're going to want to click this plus and you're going to name the scene whatever. I'm going to say example. Okay, so now that you have that new scene pulled up, you're going to want to go ahead and go to your sources and click the plus logo and you'll see all these options pop up. Obviously, there's a bunch of stuff that you will be able to explore here, but we're really just going to focus on the video capture device here. Because technically, your capture card is being seen similar to how your webcam is. So we pull this up, and it says to create a new. Obviously, you can see the existing example, but for this, we, have, we still are able to set this up in our own way. And after a little bit of time, it will eventually pop up here as the Live Gamer Extreme. It's actually pretty important, though, to keep this on capture audio only you will see that I have a separate audio thing right here, and that's for my capture card. If I go ahead and hit my home, since you can kind of hear the game, if I hit my home button, you can see that the audio meter will go down. I only recommend doing this if your PC is good enough to be able to handle it. Because sometimes you'll hear audio cutoffs, you'll hear audio static only on that thing alone, and that's because it's going through like two different audio channels. So usually, I'll keep this muted. Based on what it is, I'll just keep this muted. If I'm talking to friends on Discord, I'll mute the desktop audio and turn on the Aver Media audio, and so on and so forth. So this kind of gives you an option. Is If you're talking to friends on Discord, but you're trying to get gameplays and whatnot, you could easily mute out their voice and get the game that you want to record audio only just by unmuting this and muting that that your desktop audio. Whenever you go to edit the video, you will be able to look at all those audio layers and be able to turn down, turn up, mute, completely delete entirely to get it out of the video if you want to. So by the time everything is over and done with, this is what the preview screen should look like. You can see my face cam. I got a border here. You will have to set, up, set all that up on your own. Again, toy with all the options that you can. I'm just kind of showing you how to get it started. But that being said, that's pretty much all you need to know. That's all my settings. That's all my recommendations. Those are some of the tips that I have. This has worked for me so far. I've had no audio lag, nothing, no input lag, nothing like that. The console settings is all based on how you want it. But I will say if you're going to record from PS5, make sure you turn off the HDCP option before you plug in the console. You will have to look up how to turn it off. So hopefully you did enjoy this video. Hopefully it helped you out a little bit. If it did, make sure to leave a like on the video and make sure to subscribe if you're brand new to the channel. Let me know down in the comment section below. Did anything I mentioned in this video help you at all? Or if you're somebody who's already on YouTube and recording stuff, you've been doing that for a while and there's something in this video that you didn't know about, let me know down in the comment section below. I appreciate you guys. I love y'all. Happy recording and I hope you have a fantastic day.